I pop the lid off a jumbo tub of Play-Doh and place it to my face like an airplane oxygen mask. I travel to a different time and place. There's a reason why the smell of Play-Doh is able to transport us. The sensation of smell, the retrieval of memories, and our emotions are intertwined by our olfactory system and the brain. According to aromatherapy experts, that intermingling has the ability to reduce stress, increase energy, and restore balance. Of course, they're talking about scents like cocoa, not Play-Doh. Yet give any surly senior citizen a sniff and just see what happens. In 2005, someone even made a Play-Doh cologne. It's not an ode to toilette, it's an ode to the toy chest. Sort of like the persuasive words written in 2018 by Hasbro's lawyers who successfully had the scent of Play-Doh trademarked. It smells a little bit like almonds, a little bit like vanilla, and a whole lot like childhood. The legend of Santa Claus leaving lumps of coal in the stockings of naughty little children has given the fossil fuel a bad rap. Yet it was because of the messiness of heating our homes with coal that Play-Doh came into being. From 1885 until 1950, coal was our nation's most widely used heating fuel, despite the sooty mess that coal furnaces produced. Wallpaper was made from actual paper, and that meant you couldn't get it wet. To clean it, homemakers took a wad of doughy wallpaper cleaner and rolled it up and down their papered walls to pull off the soot. Over the years, many brands of wallpaper cleaner hit the market, most made from a simple mixture of flour, water, salt, and borax. Play-Doh's off-the-wall journey from cleaning compound to modeling compound began at a Cincinnati soap company called Cut All Products. Brothers Cleo and Noah McVicker ran the company. In 1933, they made their first batch of wallpaper cleaner for Kroger grocery stores. It proved so popular that other stores began to order, and soon cut-all wallpaper cleaner was a grocery store staple. After World War II, furnaces powered by oil and gas began to replace coal furnaces. In 1947, vinyl wallpaper was introduced, which could be washed with soap and water. These two technological advances created a swift decline in the demand for Cuddall's core product line. After Cleo McVicker died in a private plane crash in 1949, his son Joe McVicker and his son-in-law Bill Rodenbaugh were brought in to try to save a company on the verge of collapse. Meanwhile, in Dover, New Jersey, Joe McVicker's sister-in-law Kay Zufall was running a community nursery school. I was reading articles about how I could do a better job at running a nursery school. And I read, you can use wallpaper cleaner at the daycare center, and the children will mold ornaments out of that. Oh, thought I, wallpaper cleaner? <laughs> so I whistled out in a big hurry to the local uh, hardware store and bought some wallpaper cleaner. <laughs> and in fact, the children helped. We spread it out and mushed it up and made ornaments and I hung them on a tree in a bow window. We have got to get Joe here to see what we've done with wallpaper cleaner. Joe came, looked at it and he says, my God, we'll do it. Cuddall's wallpaper cleaner was non-toxic and unlike clay, it didn't stain. So after the McVickers and Rodenbaugh removed the detergents, replaced the solvent-like smell with a subtle almond scent, and added colorant, they started to make a brand new product that they'd already been making for 22 years. He calls us and says, we are going to roll the first cans tomorrow. As part of that phone call, we said to him, what are you going to call it? And it was he then who said, rainbow modeling compound. And Bob and I said together, no, you can't call it that. So he says with great panic, well, what are we going to call it? We're going to, we're going to roll the cans tomorrow. So Bob says, we'll call you back. So he and I sat down and, and visited about this. But I said, Bob thought of it. 
And, and you said, no, we thought of it. In any case, we said, call it Play-Doh. It came in single gallon cans in only three colors, red, blue, or yellow. By mixing those primary colors, kids could make any color in the rainbow. And so they named their new company Rainbow Crafts. Bill Rodenbaugh called on the Cincinnati Board of Education, and soon Play-Doh was in every elementary school in the city. But the real breakthrough came in 1957, when Play-Doh was featured across the country on national TV. How Rainbow Crafts was able to get that much exposure without spending a dime is a testament to the gift of persuasion that Joe McVicker had and the intuition of a man named Bob Keeshan, better known as Captain Kangaroo. Keeshan loved Play-Doh, but Rainbow Craft didn't have any money for advertising. Joe shrewdly offered Captain Kangaroo 2% of Play-Doh's sales if he would feature it on his show. As sales soared, Bill Rodenbaugh happily signed royalty checks to Keeshan's production company. And after that, Joe struck similar deals with TV shows like Ding Dong School with Miss Francis and Romper Room. Once Play-Doh hit, it took Rainbow Craft 16 months just to fill the back orders, and their new product was extremely profitable. Cut All sold three 12-ounce cans of wallpaper cleaner for 25 cents. Three cans of Play-Doh, nearly the same stuff in the same cans, sold for $1.50. Cut All Products went from sales of under $100,000 in 1954 to owning and operating Rainbow Crafts with sales of $2.4 million just four years later. By 1959, the 30 millionth can of Play-Doh was sold. When Play-Doh first came out, kids were encouraged to allow it to harden because it would dry out so quickly. In the mid-1950s, Joe McVicker hired a chemist named Dr. Tian Liu to help them perfect the Play-Doh formula. Here, Dr. Liu and Bill Rodenbaugh study quality control samples. After Rainbow Crafts was sold to General Mills and moved under the Kenner brand, Dr. Liu continued to consult for Kenner as the world's foremost Play-Doh expert. Joe McVicker and his uncle Noah filed for their patent on Play-Doh on May 17, 1960. That same year, two GE engineers named Bob Bogle and Bill Dale approached Rainbow Crafts with a toy idea. It really didn't fit the company, but Bill Rodenbaugh was so impressed that he asked the two men to go and take a tour of the Play-Doh factory. At the Rainbow Craft factory, after the Play-Doh was mixed in a huge hopper, it was fed into a 200 horsepower extruder, where it was pushed out of a round outlet about two and a half inches in diameter and cut off at the proper length and dropped into Play-Doh cans. The sight of this huge extruder sparked an idea. A fun factory, let's have a Play-Doh party. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? A shooting star. You can make all sorts of great things with a Play-Doh Fun Factory. I made spaghetti. The Play-Doh Fun Factory toy comes with everything you see here from Kenner. The Play-Doh Fun Factory, a toy extruder that allowed even the youngest kids to push Play-Doh through a variety of shaped holes, was an immediate hit. Over the years, many other Play-Doh contraptions injected fun into the brand. Put in the Play-Doh, there it goes. Now pump out the Play-Doh hose. Make the fireman's hats and the fire plug. Now hook up the hose. Up the ladder, there he goes. Now pump out the Play-Doh hose. Playing fun and lots of fun. You can make with Play-Doh. Sit right down, crank up the chair as Daddy grows his Play-Doh hair. Shave and a haircut. Next, please. Brother needs a little off the top in the fuzzy pumper barber shop. Open wide, look inside, he needs some Play-Doh teeth. One goes here, one goes there, some go underneath. Now his Play-Doh teeth are done. Dr. Drill and Bill is fun. You can make it with Play-Doh. All these contraptions are cool, but for me, it's the open-ended play of this mushable, rollable stuff that makes it classic. A world that kids can mold themselves. Rainbow Crafts was selling well over a million cans of Play-Doh a year when in 1964 they began selling overseas for the first time, to England, France, and Italy. Their success in the merger-laden toy industry meant that it was only a matter of time before a bigger fish became attracted to all that colorful dough. 
In 1965, General Mills offered Joe McVicker $3 million for Rainbow Crafts, and he took it. By 1972, a year after General Mills had placed Play-Doh under its Kenner brand, the 500 millionth can of Play-Doh was sold. Many mascots have peddled Play-Doh over the years. The earliest cans featured some children on the label, but by the mid-50s, Rainbow Crafts molded together Elmer Fudd and Peter Pan to give us the Play-Doh Pixie. In 1960, that pointy-eared pitch man was replaced by a boy mascot wearing an artist beret. Play-Doh Pete was his name, and his look changed over the years. Around 2002, he gave up his beret for a baseball cap before hanging it up a short time later. Nowadays, the Play-Doh containers themselves do the talking. Hasbro became the owner of Play-Doh in 1991 and turned the brand into very big business. It's estimated that nearly 2 billion cans of Play-Doh have been sold since 1955, enough to roll out a Play-Doh snake that would wrap around the earth 300 times. And it all started with Kay Zufall. Although she never received any financial benefit for her inspiration, she loved seeing kids play with Play-Doh. Our granddaughter Anna wanted to do um, show and tell about Play-Doh. So Kay came over to the school and Anna did a little show and tell and said, my grandma here invented Play-Doh. The kids said, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me another one. And I don't think they ever did believe her. <laughs> when I see a child playing with Play-Doh, it makes me feel really good that somehow that we, Pop and I, contributed to this little person's pleasure. I had the wonderful opportunity to interview Kay and her husband Bob in 2009 for the documentary film Toyland and meeting them was one of the great honors of my time in the toy business. The Zoo Falls and Cut All products each have an incredible epilogue to the Play-Doh story, and you can read about those in my description below. Here's my friendly reminder to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and hit that notification button so you never miss out on the fun. I hope this video has offered you a respite from any worries you may have and given you some needed breathing space.